Well, good evening, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albano Rhino Beer Review. Today you have the Rhino. We're looking at this beer right here. This beer was sent to me by Dan from uh, BoozeReviews.ca. So thank you very much, Dan. This is out of Alberta. Uh, you'll see it's basically nothing on the can, right? This is Collaboration Brew number two from Big Rock and Last Best. One second. <coughs> there we go. Uh, this is 5.2% alcohol by volume. And basically, I, I, I think I love this concept here is they brewed a style of beer. And they tell you nothing about it. They tell you the ABV, and that's it. They don't tell you the style because that can give you pre preconceptions. They don't tell you any ingredients because that can give you preconceptions. I actually, uh, I don't think this would be allowed to be sold here in Ontario because there's no ingredients because it doesn't even say it contains barley or anything like that. Um, but I love that, uh, that little game of, here, drink the beer, and decide whether you like the beer or not on its morals instead of just, uh, well, on its laurels instead of just on what we told you about it. Because, I mean, I try to be 100% neutral, but there are times where even I can be swayed by something that a can says or a bottle says, um... Golden colored, bright white head, there's a snap crackle pop, lots of carbonation moving in there, I can see my hand, no, just a tiny tiny bit of haze, um, yeah, visually, it's not, a, not an unappealing beer, but it's also not my most appealing look, I do kind of like that orange glow that comes out of this beer though, scent. Okay, um, strange, uh, a little bit of grapefruit, a little gr bit of grapefruit, uh, some grassiness, grapefruit, grassiness, earthiness, and also a, like, almost, uh, allspice and cinnamon-like scent. It smells interesting, let's try it. Cheers. I would say, if I had to guess a style, if I had to guess a style, I would uh, I would guess a pale ale, and if I had to narrow it down past a pale ale, I would guess a uh, a Belgian pale ale because it does have those uh, almost saison like uh, flavors in there. A little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon, uh, very earthy, very very earthy. Yet there is some pine and some uh, some grapefruit at the same time also <coughs> also it's it has a lot of yeast esters on the back end yeah it almost has that like um, that clove dryness and uh, that that you would get from a saison hmm. intriguing beer uh, you know what though, all in all, it doesn't have all that many flavors, and a beer that's completely blind to me, I, I would hope would be a more complex brew than this. I understand that, you know, you don't want to put too many ingredients in so that you, you don't know, get sued by somebody saying they're allergic to something or something, or anything like that, but this just seems like your average, uh, your average pale ale, as I said, I, I would guess, I would guess a, uh, a farmhouse pale or a Belgian pale and it's not a bad beer it's not a bad beer at all um, lots of brewing yeast Though some of you know where that came from um, <coughs> not a bad beer it's just not it's not uh, 
I don't know. Again, like I said, if, if I was to do a, if I was personally going to do something like this, where I was going to make a surprise beer and surprise you with it, it would be something more surprising than, uh, then here's a beer that's pretty much your average beer. I mean, it drinks well. Yes, Cat, I know you're here. It has almost a touch of a... The malt up at the forefront has almost a touch of like a, like a honey flavor to it, and I mean that's just the malt itself. It's not. I don't think there is actually honey in the beer. I think it's just the malt giving off that flavor, and my mind playing with that flavor because of the color and the look of the beer. But it it, it kind of has that like honey malt sweetness. Then that like nutmeg and clove dryness mixed with some earthy, woody, and uh, grapefruity uh, hoppiness. Uh, very easy drinking, light bodied. Uh, the flavor does not sit on the back of the palate, it goes away pretty quickly. All in all, I can't complain about this beer. Thank you guys for watching, have a wonderful evening. Big Rocks Collaboration Brew Number 2. Thank you, Dan, for sending this to me. I'd give this a 7.75 out of 10. I would buy it again and drink it again. Hell, it kind of reminds me... It kind of reminds me of uh, Big Rocks IPA, but with, like, a Belgian twist to it. Anyway, guys, bye.